Good morning guys. Today I wanted to show you what school and the kids on the road looks like and tell you about um, all the different options that we looked into, the one that we chose and why, the time it generally takes us, how easy or difficult it is, the kind of activities they're doing, what we focus on, um, the resources that we get and um, just basically give you an insight and an overview of what it actually looks like um, to school your kids while you're traveling. My name's Vicky, this is my family Trent, Ava, Sophia and Daniela and together we are Big Lap Big Life Oz and we're on the adventure of a lifetime. We sold our house, bought a caravan, Travel Australia indefinitely. We can't wait to share it with you. So let's get into it. It's gonna be awesome. The kids are just inside now with Dad doing some schoolwork. Uh, the last few weeks that we've been in Exmouth while Trent's been working, it's just been me with all three kids. So that is a little bit hectic. It can be depending on what work they've got to do and what mood they're in. Um, but today Trent's not working, so he's in there doing that with them now. What are you doing, Ava? I'm writing the last paragraph of my book report on Friday Barnes. Awesome. Mm. How are you going, Sophia? So I've done maths and I've done spelling and now I'm doing my poster for Responsible. So I write Responsible, look before you jump, pick up trash. And this is for? English. Integrated English and Health. Mm -hmm. And then I got to do journaling about the glass by the boat and how we saw two turtles and huge bombies and everything. Yep. Cool. 230. What are you uh, currently working on, madam? So I've done spelling and now I'm doing maths. Math. Is it easy or difficult? Easy. Good. That's what we like. Day of the day, right? The day. Okay, I forgot that one. Ninety-four. What are you doing, Danny? Um, uh, I'm reading what we did in our thing. Do you want me to read it to you? You can read one page. I'll read this one. Then. Do you like looking at what we did in your journal? Okay, I'll read these both pages. Do you like it? Yes. We fed the wallabies and the birds and they were so hungry they ate all of it. <laughs> all right, the kids have finished their schoolwork for the day, so I'll just run you through quickly um, all about the school and, and how we do it and stuff like that. So when I was doing my research for this trip, one of the main things I was con concerned about was the schooling and how that would work when you were traveling and um, how difficult it would be and stuff like that. So first I just thought I'd run you through the options um, that were available and then I'll tell you which one we chose and why we chose that one and then we'll go through how that looks for us. So the options from my research and bearing in mind we're in Western Australia and it does vary slightly from state to state. Some, some will be the same, some will be different. Um, but the options that I could gather that were available were um, an exemption, um, homeschooling, distance education, or school of the air. And um, so those were the four. If there's more, I didn't know about it, let me know in the comments, but those are the four that I found. Um, the first one that I liked the sound of because it was a, a big change for us, it was a lot to take on and you know we weren't just moving house which is they say one of the most stressful things you can do but we were also selling 99% of our stuff, buying a new caravan, buying a new tow vehicle, learning how to work all of that, moving into a caravan, being on the road and 
the thought of having to then start school and the kids as well on top of that was just a bit overwhelming so I thought great we'll get an exemption for the first 12 months if we can that might have been pushing it a bit but for as long as we possibly could just to give us a little bit of breathing space and then we'll figure out what we're going to do after that as it happens I don't I did look into the exemption I spoke to the school about it and it wasn't an option um, for us the next one I looked into was homeschooling um, schooling would be good is that you set your own workload um, it's not as demanding you kind of can draw on your experiences to cover the curriculum and so it would be sort of less stressful in that way that you weren't having to sort of keep up with the work schedule because you're setting the schedule and the pace however I know that I'm that type of personality and that type of person who would constantly be worrying about are we doing enough, we should be doing more, have we covered this, have we covered that and that would just be on my mind constantly so and I know you can buy curriculums, um, there's companies out there I looked into, I think one of them was like in the box or something like that anyway there was a couple I looked into and they weren't very expensive maybe about $800 for the year um, but obviously we've got three kids at three different stages so we would need three separate curriculums and two so once you were set up for homeschooling they had to come and do like a home visit after three months and then I think it's another one every year or something like that so that's obviously a barrier and a bit tricky when you're traveling and in a van um, and you don't really have access to obviously if you buy a curriculum you might have access to that um, company they might help you with it but largely it's on you so and I think if maybe if we had one child at school age that would be might have been a better option but I decided that would just be too much on us as the parents to figure out and work through so we kind of ruled out homeschooling for that reason um, distance education from what I could gather just through different forums and stuff like that is quite a heavy workload and it's not really flexible for traveling families was what I gathered from a lot of comments and forums and asking questions around and stuff like that so um, they basically expect you to get all of the work done and it might be three or four hours worth of work and um, I could be wrong but that's that was the impression I got and also it's all um, online I think I'm not sure if they actually send you out physical work and I didn't want the kids to be online all the time firstly for the obvious barriers of we're not always going to have service and secondly we, we're just not a device in a digital family so we've got one iPad which they share and I didn't really like the idea of them each having an iPad and having to do all their work like that um, so then which brings us to the fourth option which is the option we went with which is school of the year and School of the Air, I thought, sounded like a real good middle ground between distance education and homeschooling. So you're not completely doing it by yourself. You're getting the workload set and you've got access to a teacher. Um, but it's also quite flexible because they're already doing it remotely with kids um, that are traveling and they have, well, yeah, they're quite flexible for kids on the road and stuff like that. So that's the option we went with. I initially, contacted Kalgoorlie School of the Air and they wouldn't take us because we weren't in the catchment zone so some schools maybe their numbers are high and then they're not looking to take on um, any more students so you do have to find one that's um, flexible and willing to take on traveling families um, we went with Carnarvon School of the Air which have been brilliant and I do know also that Mika Thera School of the Air are taking on travelling families as well as Kimberley School of the Air. So they're the other families we've met that are doing School of the Air there with those schools. There's probably others, but those are the three that I've come across so far. So with School of the Air, um, they send you out, so at the end of each term, they send you out all the next term's work in a big red bag like this. Um, and the postage is absolutely free so you just return everything in the big red bag and it's all paid for um, you just give them your address of where you're gonna be a couple of weeks before the term ends for the following term so you just use your parcel collect um, if you, you when you're traveling you have to set up like an Australia post account and it's all on your phone it's really easy and you can set up a parcel collect address for whichever post office is nearest to you or where you're gonna be and they send it there and then you just obviously go in collect the work and then sort through it so the first uh, bag that we got was quite large and it was very overwhelming going through all the work and um, and then sort of 
organizing it and setting it all out and knowing where to start but now that we uh, we're nearly two terms in we've got it fairly um, organized now and we know what we're doing with it so in terms of the workload so time wise it's really difficult to put a time on it because some days you're done really quickly and some days it can just seem like it's taken forever but definitely the maximum would be two two hours and that's for three or three different stages um, maybe two and a half and that all depends on what the work is that day the mood of the kids how tired they are your mood where you are what's going on outside um, obviously there's always a lot of distractions so when we're in a caravan park we've, we generally now tend to stay in the caravan to do the work because there's so many distractions around and the kids you know they're like oh what's that kid doing what i want to go over there and play so when we're in the caravan it just does eliminate a little bit of those distractions um and then the work that we do so we focus mainly on just doing some english some maths spelling activity they do their journaling which they don't do every day but um, a couple of times a week depending on if we've done something exciting or journal worthy um and then they, I also got them a subscription to Mathletics, so just to back up the learning that they're doing. Um, and it's something they can do in the car, so they just do a couple of bars of Mathletics and that just, it, it's nice for them because they're on the iPad, it's like a game, and it keeps their math skills up. Everything else they're learning really just from our experiences being on the road, you know, that we're constantly visiting museums and um, aquariums and all sorts of things like that and learning about history each place that we go to we talk about um, the town's origins and what it's there so like for instance broom is a pearl and industry that's how broom came about was through the pearl and industry and Exmouth came about through the um, uh, after the war with the american um, uh, naval base and also the ningaloo reef and stuff like that so they're learning a lot of other things through that um, the work, so difficulty, it's, it, it is manageable, it's the first term, some of the work was a, we did actually have to, it was a bit tricky teaching the kids, but now that like we're, we know what we're doing and we've got the resources, it's definitely, um, the girls are managing it fine. Ava can generally work through her work by herself, she doesn't need help very often, she, Ava's our, um, year five student and Sophia needs a bit of help with maths she's our year four student but she can generally work through the rest herself and Daniela obviously being a year two student she needs a little bit more um, input from us so um, yeah time is like I said anywhere from sort of one hour to two and a half max I'd say so it's not huge um, and we definitely could get through it in an hour to an hour and a half each day if everybody was on point and well rested and not distracted and in a good mood etc etc um, logistics I've covered they send it out in the post to your nearest post office in the big red bag it's the next term's work so they send everything's paper based um, and then the, you get set up on the app Seesaw if you're familiar with that it's an app where you can um, talk to the teacher and upload work so some of the work we upload on there originally we were uploading everything on seesaw but that just became a little bit tricky because we didn't always have service and keeping up with what had already been uploaded and what needed to be uploaded and it was just taking a long time and using a lot of data and stuff so i actually contacted the teachers and said look that's quite tricky can we just send it back to you all in the red bag and they said yeah that's not a problem but you'll just have to send it back in week six so basically their reports are going to be written on six weeks worth of work instead of the ten weeks worth of work but I'm not really too fussed about that as long as they're doing the work and learning what they need to learn um, so yeah we just send all the work back in week six um, that we've done and then we continue and then the last few weeks of work will go back in the next term with the other terms work um, the routine well I've mentioned that we sort of stay in the caravan to do it now if we're in a caravan park we generally get up have breakfast and then get the work done first thing in the morning that way you've got a little bit of leverage with the kids because if they want to go out and play with their friends well 
you've got to get your work done. Um, and everybody's just a bit more switched on in the morning. So we get it done in the morning. Um, I did think that we might be a bit more flexible with the work, i.e. we might um, have a spell where we didn't do school work if we were busy or somewhere fun and then catch up or we might try and get ahead and then have weeks off but that just became too tricky and it's much much easier for us anyway to just keep that consistency keep that routine going and just get up in the morning do your hour or your two hours worth of work your little bits of activity and then it's done and even on travel days so travel days can be tricky and sometimes on travel days we'll get up and travel and then in the afternoons we'll do the work when we've arrived um, but it is much easier just to keep on top of it like that and do it every single day I find anyway because especially when the kids have had a break it's really hard to get them back into the work as well so if they just know right we we'll get up we we'll do our work it's done there's less um, battles um, organization okay so I've figured out now that we get through about two sets of English work per term, two sets of maths work per term, and then there's a um, each week there's a spelling activity. So each day is a different activity, and each week is a different set of words, and then there's high frequency words in there as well. So we get through that every term, as well as like I said, the journaling and the um, athletics, and then a couple of additional reports and stuff. So, for instance, last term the girls did a biography. Oh. I'll take you and show you how I keep it all organised. Oh. In this cupboard here, I've got it all stored on that one shelf. So I just went to Kmart and I bought these magazine um, holders, which they. I was actually quite disappointed when I figured out they weren't going to stand up and I thought oh no what am I going to do but then I figured out you can just tip them on their side and store them like that so we've got one for oh I can get it back in everything is so strategically packed so we've got one here that's just got um stationery in it and then Daniela's got her one Sophia's got her one Ava's got her one with all her work in it and then this one here on this end has just got um oops can you see can't see what I'm doing this has got um reading books and things like that so then in each person's little magazine folder thing we've got these clear ones and then we've got completed activities. So as they complete their work, I just put it in here, which is then easy to pop in the red back bag and send back for the teachers. This is the answer box. So I'll keep that out so I can show you. And that's obviously what I, we use. And this is their work. So their second sets of work um, for them to do when they've finished their first set. And then their journals get kept in here as well. But yeah, so we've effectively we've got one magazine rack holder thing for each child, and each child in there has got one. Uh, what do you call these things? A folder for work completed, work to do, and answer books. Oh, and these little pencil cases—they usually sit. Just in the front there and stop everything sliding around when we're traveling and i bought these pencil cases from office work and i specifically got these ones they were a little bit more expensive but it just keeps them organized everything's got a place and it means nobody's losing stuff and everything in there that they need they've got highlighters pens pencils rulers scissors felt tips colored pencils rubber and sharpener it's got everything they need and because everything's got a place you can easily see when something's missing so they all sit there like that and they don't fight because oh you've got my pencil because it's all in their little spot and then for the actual work for each i've got them each a, um, a folder like this from office works i did look into getting the um trip in a van one but they 
we're out of stock and we're on a pre-order and we weren't going to get here in time so I took myself off to Office Works to see if I could find something similar and this is what I came up with. I think they were about $15 and it just opens up like this. So they've got like a, um, a pad of paper here and then they've got the uh, all the different sections and then I've just labelled it. So we've got um, info, Ava's got that with all our little bits and pieces, any resources like times tables, charts, things like that that they need to look at. And they've got their spelling activity, their maths, their English, and then art. And art's really lovely actually, it's such a nice activity, I'll show you that in a bit. Um, so this is all the work that they're actually working on at that time. And then like I said, as it's completed, it gets transferred to the completed folder and then we bring out the next set of work and pop it in here so that it's easy just to grab their black folder in the morning, to grab their pencil case and that's everything they need is in there. So the spelling activities, this is their little spelling book that they get each week is a different one. And on Mondays they have a test. They also have high frequency words, they get a little bag of um, with all the words on cutouts like this and they pick out, Ava picks out six, the other girls pick out four, write them in on the front page on Monday. So we do the test there like that and then on Tuesday is a um, repeating syllabic spelling strategy. Uh, Tuesday is Spelling detective. What do you do on spelling detective, Ava? You write the words in the syllables and then you write them in the sounds in different colours. Yeah, so they're doing the syllables and then sounds and then word webs. So I think that's like um, the word and then three synonyms of that word. So give me an example, Ava, for what are you doing this week? Promotion. So you would put promotion in the middle bit. And then the three cinnamon, cinnamon, synonyms would be job. Yeah. Progression. Yeah. Um, raise. Possibly. Yeah. Did that for me. And then Wednesdays. They word. Sorry. Seek the sound. My sound this week is pro. Yeah. So all the words. So each week they're working on a different sound. This week is pro. So all the words are. Pro. Promotion, projection, progressive. Yeah, and then so in this paragraph, they're looking to seek that sound, all the words with that sound in it, and then they write them down here and do a little picture. Thursdays is finding the error, sorry, and then correcting the errors. And then Friday, and Friday's a bit more input from us because we have to do dic 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 timed dictation with them, so it's the same passage that they've worked on the last two days we read it out they write it down and we see how many words they get in correctly spelled with punctuation neat blah blah um, and they've got the same amount of time each week and obviously each week they're looking to do better so that's spelling oh and then on Friday they have another test to see obviously any words that they got wrong at the start of the week have they do they get them right now the spelling's really each day it's like five minutes 10 minutes, something like that. Um, maths. So we'll get a booklet like this. So two, for instance. Although this term, um, we've got a huge folder sent for this term and I actually did email the teachers and say, we're not gonna get through all this work and also we don't have room to store all of this in the caravan. So we're now, you know, we've been in communication and we now know two sets of work for each and we're pretty good. If we need any more, we can, they can always send us more. Um, so yeah, this is a maths book. It's got quite a lot in it. Days five and days six, so they've got a number of activities and then they finally get to day five, which is about halfway through the term and that's like a, you know, to help them with that, that's like a test. That's what the teacher looks at and so sees whether, how they're doing with their maths. And each little set comes with the answer book as well. Um, Generally the maths is easy, you don't really need to look at the, the answer book unless the question's badly worded or something like that and you're not sure what they have to do. Oh, well, there's Ava's answer book. So if Ava's stuck with something and I read and I'm like, mm, not really sure what they need you to do, then I'll consult the answer book 
and that might become a bit clearer but generally it's fairly straightforward and she can work through it and it's the same for all three girls English they get a little set book like this and it's just very straightforward um, activities that they work through and that'll get sent back to the teacher um, and yeah so we work on doing about two to four pages of maths a day depending on how quickly they got through it how easy it was or difficult um, and a couple of pages of English um, and the spelling activity and then journaling so the English doesn't generally come with an answer book for the parents, it's fairly straightforward and the teacher just looks at it when it gets sent back, except Daniela's is different because she needs a bit more input from us. So for Daniela's English we get um, quite a significant book because we're actually te like teaching it to her. So this is what we get. Called, so one's the activity book, one's lesson notes, and then it literally tells you for Daniela, for each activity sheet, it tells you what to say, how you know how to work through it with them. Um, so it's basically telling you how to teach them because obviously at this age you're still teaching them the concepts, um, and that's quite tricky if you're not a teacher. So these books are actually really great. It, it's just so simple it takes you through it step by step and yeah so for Daniela we really only get through one activity sheet of English a day because it's it is quite in depth on each activity sheet they want yeah it's really self-explanatory easy once you get your head around it um, each to each at the end of each term when you get the red bag it does take a bit of time to go through the work sift through it all get it all organized but once you've done that, the term flows really easily. It's Once it's in their little folder, they know what they're doing with it. And you've got the lesson notes like for Daniela's year group and it just tells you what to do. And I've been surprised actually at how uh, straightforward and easy it is and how nice it is at, to actually teach your children and to know what they're learning. And once you know what they're working on in their schoolwork, it's very easy then to pull that in in everyday life. It, so all day, every day when we're doing things, I'll, I, if I see something and I know, oh, Sophia's working on that in maths, I can ask her a question. So that's what's quite nice about being involved in teaching your kids is you know what where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, and you can pull that into everyday life as of when we're out and about and when we're going to the aquarium and stuff like that. And Because that's all learning, of course, that's their science and their um, geography and their history and stuff like that um, oh art I did say I was going to tell you about the art so it's really lovely because um, School of the Air Carnarvon are set up for traveling families so they have sent us adapted work that we can do and for art um, we get to do art sculptures or nature sculptures so they send us land art program for traveling students and there's a that tells you about us different artists that do nature sculptures Andy Goldsworthy and then there's um, a couple of different ones that they want us to do uh, so we've done two so far when we've been out in nature on nature walks and stuff they just collect bits and pieces that they like to look off and then they have to make either a wreath design with one of them or an animal of your choice that's or, the next one um, yeah there's all sorts in there and then we just take a picture of that and send that off to the art teacher us that's schoolwork that's how we do it that's the options that um, was available to us the reason we chose school of the air and if you have any questions please just pop them in the comments and I'll